Okay, uh, greetings, uh, you know, welcome to today's class. So, a quick recap of what we did in the previous class, you know, like uh, we looked at uh, engine performance, right. So, we uh, saw that the energy obtained from fuel, you know, like is uh, uh, first spent to, uh, what to say, overcome certain losses, you know, like uh, some part of the energy, you know, like from the fuel is lost through exhaust and through the coolant and also engine radiation and whatever is remaining is what acts on the piston and that is what is called as indicated energy. And then like we have another uh, set of energy losses uh, through friction, pumping and uh, the energy taken to drive other devices uh, which are called, uh, which are lumped as friction energy or friction power and whatever is remaining and that comes out of the uh, engine is what is called as the brake power and the corresponding energy is typically called as the brake energy, okay. So we defined a few terms, power terms, indicated power, friction power, brake power and also the corresponding thermal efficiencies, uh, indicated thermal efficiency, brake thermal efficiency, mechanical and relative efficiencies, okay. So let us uh, continue from here today. So we are going to define a few more terms, the first one which is an important parameter that characterizes engine performance is what is called as volumetric efficiency. So what is volumetric efficiency, okay. So in essence, you know like uh, one can say, you know like it characterizes the breathing capacity or the breathing ability of the engine, okay. So what do I mean by this, you know I am just putting it within quotes. So, uh, we already know that you know like the engine takes in air right during the intake stroke uh, through the intake manifold and the intake wall into the cylinder and better is the intake process the more efficient is going to be the engine right. Of course, we design the engine for a certain displacement volume. The question is like can I fill that entire displacement volume with the quality of air and air fuel mixture that I want which will ensure better combustion, okay. So that is what is characterized by volumetric efficiency. So if I have let us say an engine cylinder with a capacity of 300 cc, the question is am I going to take an amount of air? that corresponds to 300 cc multiplied by the air density which will give me some kilograms of air or grams of air, right. So that is what can be ideally accommodated in the cylinder. But the question that we are asking ourselves is that what is the actual amount of air that is taken into the cylinder through the intake system. So that is characterized by this parameter called volumetric efficiency. So let me write down the definition then we will uh, uh, get clarity on what it uh, describes. So volumetric efficiency is nothing but the ratio of the mass flow rate of air actually taken into the cylinder through the intake system by the intake system uh, we are referring to the inlet intake or inlet manifold and the intake walls and so on right so through the intake system to the rate at which air could be ideally taken into the cylinder. Okay, so that is the definition of the uh, volumetric efficiency. Okay, so let, let me write down an expression and that will clarify uh, this 
concept better. So, if we consider a four stroke engine, we can consider volumetric efficiency to be m dot r. So, suppose if I measure the mass flow rate of air which is coming into the cylinder. Kindly recall that if I put a dot over a variable that indicates uh, one derivative with respect to time, right. So, m dot r is the time mass flow rate of air which uh, is uh, taken into the cylinder through the intake system divided by the rate at which I could have ideally taken air into the system. So, that is characterized by the displacement volume of the cylinder, the density of air and also the uh, speed of rotation of the crankshaft because we are talking about rate quantities here, right. So, the rate at which air could have ideally been taken into the cylinder can be written as density of air times the displacement volume times n by 2 where n is the uh, rotational speed of the crankshaft in revolutions per second. Okay. In this particular the way I have written this particular expression it is not rpm, but uh, revolutions per second. Why am I dividing by 2 kindly know that uh, uh, we are considering a 4 stroke engine right in a 4 stroke engine there is one inlet intake uh, stroke or intake process for every 2 revolutions of the crankshaft. So, if my crankshaft is rotating n revolutions per second I am going to have n by 2 intake strokes right. So, that is why we have n by 2 in the denominator ok. Of course, the question becomes you know like another question that can immediately come to our mind is that like what about this density of air you know like we know air is a compressible fluid which density do I take right. So, if the value of the density of air is taken to be the atmospheric air density uh, depending on the local operating conditions, then this implies that the corresponding volumetric efficiency represents or characterizes the entire air intake system right because like we are essentially taking the density of air outside the engine. So, that means that you know like I am characterizing the entire intake system which consists of the intake manifold, the valves and so on right by when I calculate this volumetric efficiency. If I take rho air the value of this density as the air density in the inlet manifold or closer to the walls. I am representing or characterizing only the inlet wall or inlet port ok. So, depending on what engine we are talking about right. So, if I take density of air to be the density of air closer to the inlet wall I am only going to characterize the local volumetric efficiency that is volumetric efficiency of the uh, valve system ok. So, depends on what we plug in typically we will plug in the we will substitute the atmospheric air density and try to quantify the volumetric efficiency of the entire intake system ok. So, that is what we would typically uh, do ok. So, that is volumetric efficiency which is a uh, very uh, critical parameter you know like to characterize uh, internal combustion engines. So, moving ahead we are going to define a few more parameters. So, the next one is what is called as mean effective pressure ok abbreviated as MEP. So, as the term suggests it is indicative of the average pressure in the combustion chamber or cylinder 
based on the power output. So, we are going to use this parameter to represent what is the average pressure you know like that exists in the combustion chamber during a cycle. Of course, as we know during the operating cycle the pressure is changing within the cylinder, but what is the average pressure which will give me the same power output as what I am obtaining now from the uh, engine right. So, there are two measures once again you know like as far as mean effective pressure is concerned. The first one is what is called as the indicated mean effective pressure which is abbreviated as IMEP okay. Indicated mean effective pressure IMEP is defined as the following. IMEP is going to be integral over the cycle okay. Integral PDV is the indicated work done in one cycle okay. If you consider the ideal cycle right divided by the swept volume or the displacement volume okay. So, please note that this is the swept volume uh, uh, sometimes this may be even represented as displacement volume right. So, V disp or V subscript D and so on. So, this is the work done on the piston in one cycle divided by the swept volume that is essentially the difference between the volume at uh, BDC uh, and the volume at TDC okay. So, that is the uh, indicated mean effective pressure okay. So, the other mean effective pressure obviously will come from the brake power right. So, ob, uh, the other mean effective pressure term is what is called as brake mean effective pressure abbreviated as BMEP. So, BMEP is defined as the work output provided by the engine at the crankshaft per cycle per operating cycle divided by the displacement volume which is V B D C minus V T D C okay. So, that is the brake mean effective pressure obviously the brake mean effective pressure is lower than the indicated mean effective pressure and the difference between the two is indicator of the energy that is overcome in uh, uh, sorry in uh, used in overcoming uh, friction and uh, running other devices and so on right. You remember the term C that we looked at right during that energy analysis. So, that is what it is. So, the there is another term called friction mean effective pressure. abbreviated as F M E P that is going to be I M E P minus B M E P okay. So, that is what is called as friction mean effective pressure. So, the, uh, the term mean effective pressure uh, gives an indication of what is the average pressure in the cylinder you know like that gives me a particular power output okay. We are going to come back to this uh, in today's class and derive uh, an expression right for uh, the auto cycle as an illustration. So, that we will get a better picture of what this quantity actually tells us okay. So, a few more uh, definitions before we go to that uh, derivation. The next quantity is what is called as a mean piston speed as we know the speed of the piston keeps varying right during the uh, strokes of the piston in the cylinder, but the mean effective mean oh sorry mean piston speed S p bar is a, a defined as 2 times L times n ok. So, L is the stroke of the piston. So, 2 times L is the stroke of the is the distance travelled by the piston in 1 revolution of the crankshaft 
and the crankshaft rotates n revolutions per second. So, 2 L times n will give me the mean piston speed right. So, that is what uh, this uh, parameter will give. Now, there is uh, another parameter which is called as the specific power output P subscript S. This is the power output obtained from the engine per unit piston area. So, this essentially tells us you know like what is the power output that I get from a particular engine you know given its size right. So, there is a piston area you know like in a certain sense you know like quantifies the size of the engine right. So, the point is you know like uh, how can I relate the power output to the piston size and here the power output uh, is the brake power ok. So, that is what we would take and one can easily show that this is going to be some constant multiplied by the brake mean effective pressure multiplied by S p bar ok. So, you just use the definition of brake mean effective pressure and S b bar you will easily get this it is going to be some constant times B m a p times the mean piston speed. So, how can we justify this please note that B m e p you know like corresponds to uh, essentially the I will say brake energy right times V displacement right. So, S p bar is nothing but 2 times L times N. Now, V d by L is going to be A right displacement volume will be L times the area of the piston right. So, this I can rewrite this as 2 times B brake energy per unit cycle times N divided by A and what is this term? This is what is obtained in one cycle. So, let us say you do n by 2 cycles right. So, what will you get? So, you will get the brake power right. Of course, you need to adjust some constants right, but then like you will get the brake power output. So, I hope it is clear how we got the uh, uh, correlation right. So, the important thing is to note is that the specific power output is directly proportional to the brake mean effective pressure. So, if we want to increase specific power output we can do it in two ways ok. We can increase B m e p ok or increase S p bar that is the speed of the engine right in, in a sense n right. So, if I want to increase B m e p for a given engine right what can I do? I want to increase the average pressure uh, sort of like uh, in the engine. Of, of course, I need to maybe like uh, burn more fuel right release more energy with the expectation that I will get more, more work output ok. So, but then there is a limit on that also we will we will look at it when we look at the actual combustion process in engines ok. Another way is by also increasing the temperature uh, sorry the pressure at which the air or air fuel mixture is taken into the cylinder. See we are talking about the mean pressure or average pressure right. So, look at the uh, uh, even if you consider the auto cycle right if I increase the pressure at point 1 which is the initial state of the fluid then the entire curve will shift up then the mean pressures also would increase. So, what is that uh, engine called as you know like where we introduce the fuel or air, uh, uh, air fuel mixture or air at a pressure higher than atmospheric it is called a supercharged engine right. So, we will we will come to that later. 
So, now you can see why we have a supercharged engine right supercharged engine can be used to improve the output from the engine right because it can uh, increase the mean effective pressures leading to a higher output for the same engine so other, other specs remaining the same. So, that is another way of in increasing the brake mean effective pressure, but there is a trade off always there is a price to pay we will look at what are, what are the trade offs later on. If I want to increase SP bar I need to increase the speed of the engine right. So, that also brings challenges right. So, why what are the challenges in increasing the speed of the engine as we already seen it results in more mechanical load and if I increase the speed of the engine the number of cycles per unit time also will increase. So, the power output increases, but the rate at which I need to dissipate heat and other other effects also would increase right. So, there is a always a trade off right between all these uh, conflicting factors, but a specific power output is a useful term to uh, quantify uh, engine <coughs> performance. There is one more important parameter which is used to quantify engine performance is what is called as specific fuel consumption. So, that is abbreviated as SFC. So, what is a specific fuel consumption? It is the fuel consumed per unit time divided by the power output. So, that is the specific fuel consumption. So, immediately we can see that there are going to be two measures depending on what power quantity we, we substitute in the denominator. So, specific fuel consumption can be either ISFC or BSFC, ISFC standing uh, for indicated specific fuel consumption. BSFC standing for brake speci specific uh, fuel consumption right. So, that is something which we can easily figure out right I standing for indicated uh, B standing for brake specific fuel consumption and we can immediately see that specific fuel consumption is inversely proportional to the thermal efficiency st inversely proportional to power. But you recall what are the thermal efficiency you know like irrespective of whether it was power or indicated power or brake power it was this. So, specific fuel consumption in a certain sense it is 1 by C V times 1 by S F C right. So, you take the calorific value out you get power by m dot fuel that is one inverse of specific fuel consumption. So, you can immediately see that specific fuel consumption is uh, inversely proportional to the thermal efficiency of the engine. So, obviously, you know higher the thermal efficiency lower is a specific fuel, con fuel consumption and that is what is desirable to us right because I want to consume as less fuel as possible for delivering a given power output ok. So, we want to we want low specific fuel consumptions ideally right to the maximum possible uh, extent. 